People shunning Israeli reporters at the World Cup? Sounds good. Arabs in the World Cup refuse to speak with Israeli media. This guy's probably Israeli. Let's see. Yep. Israeli. I guarantee he's going to be complaining. So, we've all seen those videos of locals in Qatar refusing to speak with Israeli reporters that interviewed them. I mean, they gladly conversed with them until they found out that they're actually speaking with Israeli media. Base. And then we saw hate in their eyes. Hello. Yeah. Hello, where are awesome. you from? What's wrong with this? This sounds fucking awesome. My God. It's, it's no different to like um, finding out that you were speaking with a white South African news reporter from South Africa in like 1970 and being like, oh, no, thank you. It's even better, actually, because Israel is even worse. From Qatar. Oh! <laughs> uh, okay, just let me to check. Based. Which channel? I bet all the comments are like, oh my god, I can't believe they're doing this. It's, it's, they just hate us. Oh my god, they hate us. And all the comments are from fucking Indians. Dude, these people, they don't even think you're human, man. What's wrong with you guys? Yeah, th th this, is what, this is how Israel thinks of the support of Indians, so maybe they should think twice. Even though, of course, you know, a lot of Indians have the same aspirations as Israel, because they're Hindu fascists and they basically want to do to India what Israel has done to Palestine. This is how fucking the average Israeli thinks about support from Indians. Let's keep watching this. This chat. We are the public broadcaster from Israel. It's, it's even the public broadcaster from Israel. So it's not even like a private, not, not that... Not that there's any real disconnect between like a private media outlet in Israel, but it's literally the Israeli state. If you would speak to the Israeli state and have like a nice, charming little street interview, you are a fucking piece of shit. What? You'd give them like a nice little charming street interview to make money off of and, and try to paint themselves as some sort of normal, everyday, happy little country while they're fucking genociding Palestinians. You are a piece of shit. Israel. Is, you are from Israel? Yeah. Is it okay? No. No. Why? Because... Yes. Oh. What's your name? Mohsen. Mohsen. What do you do for a living? Like... Actually, I don't want to... No. We've seen weird moments at the World Cup, like... None of that is weird. These Iranian football fans that lift an Israeli reporter and dance with him, they probably had no idea that they were lifting an Israeli reporter because in Iran, speaking to Israelis is a crime. Or yeah, isn't it fucking great how ridiculous the fucking disgusting Israeli reporter he has to like put wear like Iranian national colors and shit to try and mislead people to get any sort of positive reaction from anyone because everyone fucking hates Israel. Because Israel is a disgusting settler colonial genocidal apartheid state. Based. Fucking pathetic. Like, Israeli reporters are so fucking pathetic, they need to pretend to be someone they're not to get anything resembling a positive reaction from a crowd. Iran speaking to Israelis is a crime. Or these football fans that waved the invented flag of Palestine. <laughs> the invented flag of Palestine. Behind Israeli journalists at the world. Base. Now, Palestinian media outlets. All right, look at this, the sad fucking music. This is great. I'm so glad I clicked the fucking Israeli video. This is great. Loved to post about this over and over again. And here I am posting about this too. But I want to talk about the elephant in the room. Because while they angrily refuse to speak to Israelis, they are happily using Israeli technology. Yes, the kind of technology that you can find in iPhones like the face. It's he's literally making the iPhone argument now. Facial recognition, internet, medical technology, and Israeli innovation. It's great how like half of the technologies that he brings up are technologies that they specifically invented to control Palestinians, to genocide them more efficiently. That is the number one, the number one Israeli technology export is literally like based CEO grindset entrepreneurs who aspire to create the greatest genocide doing technology. Israel uses, for example, like their exports of um, surveillance technology, facial, racial, racial facial, facial recognition technology, weapons, riot control technology, shit like that is marked as battle-tested in Gaza. The idea that the Israeli arms industry benefits from the occupation through having a captive population to contest new weaponry on is now widely accepted. Israel tries out weapons in the West Bank and Gaza Strip and then presents them as battle-proven to the international market. Truly a fantastic, right? And that's what this guy is taking pride in. Even Israeli fucking university professors admit this. 
The laboratory of the occupied territories is where things can be fine-tuned, they can be tested, and they can be retested, said Nevik Gordon, a politics professor at Ben Gurion University of the Negev. They can say, hey, this was used by the IDF, this must be good, and that helps the marketing of the goods. Some truly fantastic shit to brag about, man. Brag about the fucking technology that you invented to use on people in your concentration camps. Truly brilliant shit. Innovation that accompanies humanity on a day-to-day. -day. Look, it's so much innovation that accompanies humanity on a day-to-day -day basis. Haven't you seen the stock footage of someone plugging in a USB cord while emotional music plays in the background? Come on, you should support Israel now. You should support Israel now against the fake country of Palestine that was invented by the KGB in 1967 in order to render the debate impossible. Life. So yes, they are basically a bunch of hypocrites because if they really wanted to boycott Israel, they would need to move and live under a rock. For one, that's not that's not like not even true. But yeah, if they really wanted to boycott Israel, they should do it more. They should do it far more. Because the difference, the things that these people don't seem to understand is that even if Israel invented technology, which it hasn't really done very much of aside from um, technology to kill people with or to like racially profile them with. They're very good at that, by the way. You can just take the technology and produce it somewhere else. So yeah, there's a difference between something having been invented somewhere and something being produced somewhere. Yeah, you should absolutely boycott anything that Israel produces, exports, anything like that, including so-called journalists from Israel. Incredibly fucking based. It's, this guy is fucking pathetic. He's got nothing. Israel! Oh, kick him out, kick him out, kick him out. <laughs> hmm? Yes, we are the media from Israel. Get the fuck out. Get out of Why my golf cart. Surprised? Yeah. Why? Joke? What? Joke? Yes, I'm joking. We are from Portugal. Isn't it great how they have to pretend they're, they're people who they aren't? Because everyone hates them, of course. Yeah, you, you said this way, I'm stopped. And yes? And okay. And another thing that I noticed and only proves that they don't really have a problem with Israelis, it's not a human problem, but a political problem in the Middle East, was to... A political problem? Unbelievable. I can't believe that people have a political problem with a fucking racist settler colonial ethno state currently doing apartheid and genocide. Oh my God, can you believe it? They have a political problem. It's a political problem. That's so, that's not fair. You're not allowed to have a political problem. That's such a fucking hilarious argument. Like, let's just watch that again. I think it kind of makes him look worse. A human problem, but a really have a problem with Israelis. It's not a human problem, but a political problem in the middle. Okay, so, so they don't have a problem with individual Israelis, according to this guy. Rather, they have a, a political problem with, the, with Israel, the state, and the disgusting actions that it takes against other countries, which merits a massive boycott against it. Yeah, that is a political problem. That's good. That's fucking based. Thank you. Everything that you just said is good. Was to great. see that the anti-Israel football fans were happy to speak with the journalists prior to discovering they were Israeli. So it shows that A, they don't really have a problem with Israelis because they could- Yeah, they don't have a fucking problem with them until they find out they are representatives of a disgusting genocidal settler colonial apartheid state. Great fucking point. Great. Good. Unfortunately, you know, Israelis don't have a an, an, uh, textbook Afrikaner accent for us to identify them immediately when they speak English. If only they did, that would be so much more convenient even spot an Israeli and had a nice conversation with them and B when they heard that they were speaking with Israelis they immediately pulled the Palestine card saying that there is no such thing as Israel. This guy is just bringing up a bunch of incredibly base points that make these people look incredibly good. And that Israel has human rights problems. <laughs> I He's trying to make them seem good. He's trying to make us like them. You rule. I don't even need to say anything. I mean, if you don't I, trust I gotta the CIA, stop there because first of all, it's hilarious that people in- Now, what is it going to be like is be like, you know, you know who really has the problem with human rights? Palestine. They got- Oh, but no, he's not going to say Palestine because according to him, Palestine was invented in 1967 by the KGB in order to render debate impossible. But he's going to say something like that. Qatar want to lecture Israel on human rights. Actually, yeah, Qatar is significantly less bad than Israel on human rights. That is a fact. That's based.
I mean, Qatar is literally sponsoring Hamas that... Thank you, Qatar, for sponsoring the epic anti-settler colonial resistance. You want to talk about a terrorist group? Let's talk about Israel. Every little facet of its state, everything remotely affiliated with that state. Now, that's fucking terrorism. Let's take a look at um, human rights. Israel demands correction from Sanders. It killed only 532 Palestinian children in summer 2014. I demand you correct your, your claim, Bernie Sanders. We only killed 532 children. This is the average, like, Israeli, you know, we are the defenders of human rights sort of claim. We only killed 552 children. Come on. Let's There's not no exaggerate they can't here. Come there. We didn't kill that many kids. I guarantee you, in the same time frame since then, Palestinians have not killed even this many people total, let alone fucking children. They always, they always be like, look, they fund our enemies. Yeah, I hope they would. Anyone who funds armed Palestinian resistance to the Israeli settler colonial genocidal occupation is based. Doesn't matter how bad that resistance is, how imperfect they may be. That cause is infinitely more righteous than yours from the pure fact that they are fighting against a fucking settler colonial occupier. So shut the fuck up, you dumb motherfucker. Saying this as an Israeli, fucking an Israeli who obviously is an enthusiastic supporter of the Israeli state, who just like said two seconds ago, Palestine doesn't exist, and who's just like outright stating positive things about people taking a stand against Israeli colonialism as if like we're supposed to like be against them by default. Buddy, every single thing that you're saying about them is good. Oh, they don't want to talk to Israeli state media, to Israeli reporters who are there to normalize Israel as if it's some sort of normal everyday country rather than genocidal settler colonial apartheid state that only killed 532 children in December 2014. That's good. Everything you're saying about them is good. Even if they're doing it in Qatar, it takes a, it takes a fucking lot to be as bad as Israel. And Qatar, for, for one, not only has Qatar normalized relations with Israel, which is fucking disgusting. So, um, kind of interesting for him to just bring that up here because I guess he thinks it's like, what about ism, Con convenience or whatever. Oh no, wait, sorry. Qatar hasn't normalized ties with Israel yet. They are the holdout. It's, um, all the other Gulf monarchies who want to normalize ties with Israel. I'm not sorry to Qatar though, because they deserve to be slandered. But like, Qatar is just a fucking American puppet state at this point. All the Gulf monarchies are just American guaranteed puppet states. Israel also is. So, um, buddy, you should have a bit of solidarity with your friends, because all of them are essentially just satellite states for American imperialism, including you. A little bit more solidarity if I was in the same situation, please. Murders not only Israelis, but also Palestinian people that dare to think differently. Qatar is trying to hide all of its- By dare to think differently, what he means is desire to put all Palestinians in concentration camps and gradually filter them into as small of an area as possible until they can all be physically eliminated. That is like the gradualist genocidal ideology of Israel that this guy frames as just having a difference of opinion. Crimes against humanity with gold and diamonds, but people can see through the cracks, they can see the truth that Qatar is a radical country that pretends to welcome everyone, but with an exception of Jews, of course, because they banned an kosher exception. food and banned- He says with an exception of Jews. It's interesting that he says that because so far in all these clips I've posted, they haven't been able to find a single person saying anything about Jews or that you just know they would be, they would be posting that everywhere. They would be fucking posting everywhere, like, um, pictures of, like, like, people actually saying anti-Semitic things. All I've been able to find in these clips is just people taking exception to Israel. He even said, yeah, he even said a second ago, it's not like disliking these people. It's taking a political stand against that disgusting country, which is factually committing immeasurable amounts of genocidal crimes against Palestinians right now. So he just contradicts himself. Now it's suddenly about Jews. I wonder if Qatar even allows like prayer in general. Interdenominational Christian church. Apparently they have at least three churches. So yeah, it doesn't really surprise me that they are anti-Semitic in general. But the thing is, this guy's not saying that Qatar is anti-Semitic. Because the people who are protesting the Israeli media here, they're not, they're not the fucking Qatari state. The Qatari state is letting these Israeli reporters in, by the way. The reason they're there is because they were given journalist, journalist credentials by the Qatari state. So it's not fucking the Qatari state that is taking these actions against Israeli, Israeli supporters, which 
actions against make it sound like they're being violent or something. No, they're just fucking mocking them, being like, no, I don't want to speak to Israelis or whatever. It's random individuals who are doing this. Random people of their own accord protesting against the Israeli state. Not the Qatari state that's doing it. The Qatari state let the reporters in in the fucking first place. So now he's trying to frame it as something to do with the Qatari state. Like, Qatar doesn't, Qatar doesn't allow this to happen. Qatar does this and that. Dude, most of the people who he's used as examples aren't even from fucking Qatar. It's just random people who were there because that, that's where the World Cup happens to be. Look at, look at all these people refusing to speak with Israeli media and saying free Palestine. Yet look how hypocritical they are. Because, because according to this far-right um, Israeli news outlet, Qatar is anti-Semitic. I'm not even going to bother fact-checking this because I don't care to defend Qatar. Because it's irrelevant. These people, they're not the Qatari state. At most, you could say that some of them are Qatari individuals. But didn't you just say two seconds ago that we shouldn't equate, like, the state with the, per with the people? Either way, most of them are not even Qatar, from Qatar. He just went over, like, Iranians, random Arabs, even some wearing a fucking Argentina shirt. He didn't want to speak to Israeli journalists. So it's, it's a complete fucking irrelevant point to make. It's not even a point. It's actual whataboutism, as they say. Jewish prayer terms. at the World Cup. They even invited the radical Islamist preacher to lecture and teach everyone at the World Cup. Preach Islam. Based. I love to preach About, Islam. We all know what. But back to the thing with people refusing to speak with Israelis, it shows that they have great lack of knowledge. Mainly because the mainstream media was never reporting the truth about the Israeli politics. It's so fucking funny that the, dude, the mainstream media has been on your side the entire time and they still are. It's so fucking funny that they've somehow managed to form a narrative of Israel Praise being like to some sort of mar having some sort of marginalized viewpoint. When like pro is the pro-Israeli propaganda has been spread not just by every single significant Western government forever, but also by every single Western media outlet forever. It's just so fucking funny. Like, they live in fucking fantasy, like, bullshit fantasy worlds. What actually happened is that it became, especially with the, with the internet, it became basically impossible for the media to lie about Israeli crimes as they used to. So now they have to, like, reluctantly acknowledge them a little bit every now and again. Because otherwise, you know, it's just, it's just untenable. Because there's fucking people with smart, smart, smartphones and shit filming them and, and uploading them in two seconds. So they can't just fucking deny this shit outright anymore. And that alone is too much for people like this. That makes them like the enemy who are, who are anti-Israel, spreading anti-Israel propaganda because they meekly acknowledge shit that Israel basically forces them to acknowledge because it doesn't even try to hide it. It's so fucking sad. CNN conflict and... They, the mainstream media, created a generation of misinformed people that think that they know these something, misinformed people? but they actually don't know have no anything. idea. They don't, they don't know anything. They don't know anything. They don't know why my genocide is good and based. They know about. I'm so glad I clicked on this video. Holy shit, this was the best thing. I'm so glad I clicked on this instead of just the compilation. He didn't give a proper reason for refusing to speak with an Israeli and blaming an Israeli journalist for an entire conflict? That's just stupidity. Blaming an Israeli state journalist for working for a state that is factually committing a settler colonial genocide in this very moment. Yeah, he's a part of that apparatus, incredibly based. And lastly, Israel is a sovereign country with great history, whether if you just keep he just listen, he's just like he's like a fucking like a propaganda talking point list. He's just a guy from like a fucking Hasbara workshop. There's no substance to anything he's saying. It's fucking amazing. Enemies like it or not. And listen to this shit. It's like fucking it's this is lower tier propaganda than Prague or you. This is nothing. He has nothing to say. Amazing. Even in the darkest rooms of the international community, such the as the Human rooms. Rights Council of the United Nations, that in my opinion doesn't really represent human rights, but mere interests, they recognize the fact that Israel is a sovereign country. I mean, every Monday and Thursday, they blame Israel for occupying- It's really funny. It's really funny because he's, he's basically taking the UN acknowledge Israel as a sovereign country at the behest of the big Western powers who thought that it would be useful to have a state that they knew would be aligned with them in the Middle East. That's the only reason it was ever acknowledged as a so-called sovereign country. You know, what makes a country so sovereign or to have some sort of special right to the land or something has, little to, has nothing to do with whether the fucking US and UK say so. Israel is an illegitimate, disgusting, genocidal settler colonial state because it was formed by a bunch of ethno-nationalist settlers who wanted to expel the previous population, destroy their society, 
and build a disgusting Nazi-like ethno-nationalist one on the ruins of the one that they had destroyed. It's that simple. It doesn't fucking matter whether they are useful geopolitically for the US or the UK or whatever in order to drive a wedge, in order to you know, like have an outpost for their interests in the Middle East. That's all that fucking matters. These people, like, all they're going to do is appeal to, <laughs> the UN said so, but of course, everything else that the UN said, now that's bad. Buying uh, Palestinian land and for and Israel and Israel and Israel does this and that. Look, education. Israel does this and that. What does it do? Education and education. This is the key and the solution here. The key in this solution is more fucking dorks who've been through Hasbara workshops like me. We need more education about the other side before jumping. Ju yeah, I, t I actually agree with this. People need more education about Israel, about the nature of the Israeli state, where it comes from, what it does, what its goals are. Because you look into that for any for even two seconds, and you know right away how utterly disgusting, despicable, and only fit to be dismantled that state is. I agree with this guy 100%. He's the, the best propagandist for the Palestinian side I've ever seen in my life. Jumping to conclusions, just like these locals were doing. So please subscribe to my YouTube channel to stay informed. I think I will. I actually am going to do that right now. I want to stay informed. Thank you. You are, a, you are an extremely good unintentional pro-Palestinian propagandist. I really love you. Great video, my dude. There was this post related to this, by the way. Of course there was. Vorshites calling people racist for not wanting to speak to Israeli media, for saying free Palestine to Israeli media. Is this racist? This feels racist. I'm curious what you guys think. People don't want to talk to me as an Israeli journalist in Qatar. People don't want anything to do with me. Now that's racist. Every single one. Yes. Yeah, it's all so racist. God. For these people, it would be anti-white fucking racism if you didn't want to talk to some white South African reporter at the height of apartheid. These people are disgusting. These people are just, at this point, they're pro-Israel propagandists. That's all there is to it. Incredible. For them, BDS is like just not buying a, a, a specific brand of hummus once or twice. Not actually meaningfully boycotting the Israeli state and Israeli companies in any possible meaningful way. Anyway, yeah, that, that was great. I thank that guy so much for making that video. Awesome.